Hello everyone and welcome to this new session on setting out. Today I'm going to explain how to set out a point from two known control stations using total station. I will explain the calculations required and the procedure on the ground for setting out the point. So let's get started. Let's say that you have two control stations A and X. These are known stations, which means that you know their coordinates and you know their locations on the ground. So the coordinates in our case here are given in this table. Here we have station A and we have station X. The easting and northing for A and X are given. So these are known stations and their locations on the ground are known. They might be marked by road nail, for example. So and our aim for today's session is to set out a point I that you know its coordinates. They are given here in the table. You know the coordinates, but you don't know its exact location on the ground. And this is our task today, to calculate data necessary to set out this point in its exact location on the ground. And this point might be a corner of a building, for example, or intersection point for circular curve. If you have circular curve like this, for example, this might be the intersection point or the tangent point of the curve or a center line of a road. The same principle, this is a point that you need to set out using total station based on two known stations. Before I start the calculations and explaining the procedure for setting out a point, it is very important guys before we proceed to watch the video related to calculating the whole circle bearings. It is very important for this session that you have a very good understanding of the whole circle bearings. And this is explained in details in this video that's called whole circle bearing calculation. So simply, in summary, to set out a point I, we need to find the distance and bearing from one of these two stations. We have two stations, they are known X and A. For example, from X, if I know the distance between X and I, okay, and I know the angle here between these two lines, I can get my total station and set out I in its exact location on the ground. So we are going to calculate this angle and this distance so that we can set out I. So let's start. First, we need to calculate the whole circle bearing of XI which is, as you know, an angle from north clockwise towards line xi. So this is the whole circle bearing of xi. Let me draw it here on this sketch. This is the whole circle bearing of xi. Let's calculate this value. Now, as you know, to calculate the whole circle bearing between any two stations, you need first to calculate the change in easting. In this case, change in easting for xi, which is the easting of i minus easting of x. From the table, we've been given all the coordinates here, coordinates of A, X, and I. So you have all the coordinates in this table. This is easting of I from the table here, this one, minus easting of X, this one, and this is the answer, minus 56.534. This is change in easting between X and I. Change in northing between X and I, which is northing of I minus northing of X. This is northing of I from the table. This is northing of x from the table, I calculated that to be minus 69.493. So these are the change in easting and change on northing between x and i. Okay. Now the quadrant bearing of xi is the inverse tangent of delta a divided by delta n. I have just calculated delta a and delta n here. And don't forget here, I use delta a and delta n as absolute values. Delta a and delta n and I calculated the quadrant bearing to be 39 degrees, 7 minutes and 45 seconds. So this is the quadrant bearing. And then I'm going to calculate the whole circle bearing, which is for this specific case would be 180 plus quadrant bearing of Xi. So 180 plus this value, this is the quadrant bearing of Xi. So the whole circle bearing would be 219 degrees 7 minutes and 45 seconds this is the whole circle bearing of xi and as i mentioned you will need the distance between x and i to set out i 
this distance between x and i you need it it is easy to calculate this because we have the coordinates of x and the coordinates of i using the relation for the the square root of delta a squared plus delta n squared this is delta a and this is delta n so just you would use this relation to calculate the distance between x and i the length of x i line is the square root of delta a squared which is in our case 56.534 squared plus 69.493 squared and the answer is 89 meters 0.584 so this is the length between station x which is known and station i which is unknown on the ground that we are going to set out now once you calculated the whole circle bearing of xi and the length of xi we are going to move to the next stage which is calculating the whole circle bearing of xa this is the whole circle bearing of xa an angle from north to line xa this is line xa this is the whole circle bearing of xa that's it so we are going to calculate this value now, the whole circle bearing of xa. We will apply exactly the same steps. First, change in easting between x and a. We have the coordinates of x, we have the coordinates of a. Here we have a, coordinates of a, easting and northing. And here we have x, coordinates of x as well. So delta a between x and a, easting of a minus easting of x. And this is the answer minus 151.526 the change in northing between x and a northing of a minus northing of x this is northing of x and this is northing of a you have all the numbers just apply the relations and at this stage it's important to mention again and again if you don't understand these terms what is the change in easting what is the quadrant bearing why the whole circle bearing is this exact value please do watch the whole circle bearing video okay let's go ahead after you calculated the change in easting and the change in northing and these are the values you are going to calculate the quadrant bearing of xa using this relation the quadrant bearing is the inverse tangent of delta a divided by delta n and this is the quadrant bearing value that i have calculated for this case 14 degrees 48 minutes and 16 seconds and then the whole circle bearing of xa for this case would be 180 plus the quadrant bearing of xa we have the quadrant bearing of xa here okay and we will add 180 degrees to this value to get 194 degrees 48 minutes and 16 seconds so this is the whole circle bearing of xa now after you have calculated the whole circle bearing of xi and the whole circle bearing of xa you can stop here and get your total station and go to the ground to set out point i there are in fact two methods to set out point i the first one that i will explain now doesn't require any more calculations as you will see now so here these are the values that we have calculated and that we will need to set out point i using the first method we have the length of xi 89 meters 0.584 and we have the whole circle bearing of xi and the whole circle bearing of xa so the whole circle bearing of xi this one and the whole circle bearing of xa which is this one hmm. so to set out point i you will get your total station set up your total station over x here and then you will cite station A, cite the prism over station A here, set the horizontal angle to zero on the screen of your total station, and turn the total station telescope by this angle, 360 minus the whole circle bearing of XA. Okay, so you set up your total station over X, you cited the station A, you have set the horizontal angle to be zero, Okay, and now you are going to get the north direction by turning clockwise by this angle which is 360 minus the whole circle bearing of xa okay so because this is the whole circle bearing of xa 
And this is explained in details in the video that I mentioned, the whole circle bearing and sighting north. Okay, so now your total station is sighting north. Now from north, set the horizontal angle to zero again. Now your total station is sighting north, the horizontal angle is zero. To set out I, you need to turn it by the whole circle bearing of Xi, which is this value, which is known. You have calculated this here. This is the whole circle bearing of Xi. Okay? Now your total station is citing the direction of I. Now you will get a tape measure, for example, to measure roughly the distance between X and I. In our case, the distance is 89 meters 0.584. You will measure the distance 89.584, for example, and then use the total station to set out the exact distance of 89.584. That means that you have to use a prism here. Mostly we use mini prisms for setting out a point and then the operator here behind here will guide the other surveyor to move forward and backward until this operator reads exactly the distance between X and I which is 89.584. So on the screen of the total station this operator should read this exact distance once they have achieved this distance this one along this direction. So you, they can fix a nail on the ground and by doing that they have set out point I. So this is the first method. If you have missed something in this method, don't worry, I will repeat this in a different way in the second method. So let's return to this slide. Now in the second method, we are simply going to calculate this angle here and then use this angle to set out point I. If you look here, what is the value of this angle? It is simply the difference between this whole circle bearing of Xi minus the whole circle bearing of Xa. And we have them both. This is very easy and we will call this angle clockwise bearing, which is the whole circle bearing of Xi minus the whole circle bearing of Xa. And we have them both. We have calculated them both. This is the whole circle bearing of Xi minus whole circle bearing of Xa. So the clockwise bearing is 24 degrees, 19 minutes, 29 seconds okay now I will get this number the clockwise bearing here I will let it be in front of me because I will use it along with the distance of xi now to set out i using this method guys first I need to get my total station set up my total station over x and then I will set up a prism over a I will cite A, cite the prism here, and then I will set the horizontal angle to be zero. Now your total station is citing A, and the horizontal angle is zero. Now you need to turn the telescope of your total station clockwise by the clockwise bearing that you have calculated, which is 24 degrees, 19 minutes, and 29 seconds, simply. Okay? So now we have calculated this value to turn it just in one go here. So now you turn your total station by this angle, clockwise bearing, which is 24 degrees, 19 minutes and 29 seconds. Now your total station is citing the direction for setting out I. Now your total station is citing this direction, yeah? So that means along this direction, at some point, you have to set out I. Now get your tape measure and measure the distance from X to I roughly to be this one, 89.5, roughly not exactly because the exact set out should be using your total station. So roughly and then another surveyor should hold a prism here and the main operator here behind the total station will guide them. So they have a prism here over this point for example and this operator will measure the distance using total station by pressing on the function for measuring the distance and then they will read on the screen of the total station the distance. If it's more than this number 89.584 they will let them to come forward. If it's less than this number they will let them to go back along this line. Okay, Along this line they have 
to move forward and backward until they achieve exactly this distance on the screen of the total station. They have to read this value and then this operator will say, okay, stop here, fix a pick in the ground or fix a nail in the ground. This is point I. By doing that, we have set out point I. So in summary, these are two different methods, in fact, to set out point I. The first one doesn't require calculating this clockwise bearing, but the setting out on the ground would be in two goes. First, you need to get the north direction, and then from north, you need to set out I. So you will set up your total station here, site A, and then get the north direction. After you, you are sighting north you are going to set the horizontal angle to be zero and from here you need to turn it by the whole circle bearing of xi to set out i whereas in the second method in one go you don't need to get the north direction directly set up over x set up your total station over x site station a and then zero the horizontal angle and turn it in one go by this angle this is the clockwise bearing, which is in our case 24 degrees, 19 minutes, 29 seconds, and then set out I. Okay. For more information on reading the distance on the screen of the total station, you can watch a session called Measuring Horizontal Angles and Distances Using Total Station, so that you will have an idea about the functions on the screen of the total station. So in summary guys, today you have learned how to set out a point with known coordinates from two known stations. These two known stations have known coordinates and known locations on the ground. You have learned how to calculate the data required to set out I and also how to set out on the ground using two different methods as well. Now you should be confident about setting out any point from two survey stations with known coordinates. This is the procedure, it's very easy, it requires some knowledge about the whole circle bearing which is not difficult and then you can do all setting out calculations. I would like to mention something very important. In this session and in the previous sessions on whole circle bearings and resection calculations, traverse, etc. We know that today's total stations and instruments are very advanced and can do all of this work, okay? But for us, we need to learn the principles of the calculations, not just to rely on the machine every time. Okay, that was how to set out a point from two non-control stations. Thank you very much for listening and take care. Bye now.